This just in. Many mobile phone users received simultaneous emergency alerts almost immediately after former Senator Bongbong Marcos Jr. filed his Certificate of Candidacy this morning. But instead of the usual emergency alert reminder, the text blast was that of a pro-Marcos message rallying in support of Marcos' presidential bid. The National Telecommunication Commission, or NTC, said they already ordered a swift investigation over the emergency alert. Welcome to the Archive, where we discuss happenings in our country's history and deep dive into them. On today's episode, we will be talking about the 2001 EDSA Revolution II, also known as the event that ousted actors in Philippine President Joseph Arab Estrada. From the silver screen, Joseph Arab Estrada captured the people's hearts and urged them to vote for him during the 1998 presidential elections with his signature tagline, Era para sa Mahira. Not long after he sat down in the presidential seat, Estrada copied the tactic of dictator Ferdinand Marcos in silencing the media to avoid reports of his dirty laundry. The secret he's been hiding from the press? Graft and corruption. When a slew of exposés and accounts connecting Estrada to illegal gambling scheme wetting and accumulation of ill-gotten wealth arose, the mobile phone was what served as the people's broadcasting tool. A phone is easy to operate, does not cost much to spread news with, and with the media not properly reporting everything that has been happening, it is just what the opposing forces need to be able to create a spark that would eventually become a huge wildfire. When the impeachment trial of Estrada showed a somewhat askew result, it was through SMS broadcast text that the people were urged to get out of the iconic Ezra Boulevard to protest towards Estrada's impeachment. It was 2003 when the Philippines was named the texting capital of the world, and not long after, it gained the moniker social media capital of the world in 2015. It cannot be denied that Filipinos are quick at adapting to new technology, but are also quick in their heels in using it for good too. As opposition radio dominated the airwaves and put Marcos in tow during the 1986 People Power Revolution, it was Short Message Service, or SMS, that served as the final nail in the coffin for action star turned president Joseph Estrada's term. Estrada yielded a great many tactics to suppress the media from reporting slanderous stories about him. The president engaged in draconian undertakings, such as bribing journalists, filing libel raps, coercing media owners, and purging their advertisers to keep the media in line. Despite the seeming embargo, through SMS, the people were not only informed but also mobilized. Learning of the botched impeachment trial in January of 2001, SMS was the platform of choice to organize protests, poke fun at the president, and disseminate information. Paano niyo po nalaman na magkakaroon ng rally sa lugar ninyo? Sa text, mahigit 70 milyong text messages ang sinend sa loob lamang ng linggong to, kaya medyo imposible na hindi ka makakasagap ng balita. Sa inyo po bang palagay, ilan kayo nakatanggap ng mga text na ito? Ah, uh, marami. Dahil alam ko, 4.5 milyon ang mobile phone owners sa bansa at hindi lang naman SMS ang naging daluyan ng impormasyon. Meron mahigit 200 na anti-estrada websites at 100 email groups na nabuo. Wala eh, hindi kong pabibig ng mainstream kaya kailangan gumawa ng paraan. It was this pivotal conjuncture in history where major market-conscious networks and publications were prompted to publish and broadcast subversive materials against the president. Seeing that their ratings were plummeting, there was a need to shift sides and tip favors catering to the market. It was television that broadcasted the flawed Estrada trials in its entirety, while newspapers and radio supplanted the information gap in far-flung areas. It is said that Edsa Dos is regarded as a multimedia revolt, 
but it must be said that SMS, through its expedience and interactivity, was the people's sentinel. The topic of the first e-revolution is currently very crucial as we embark on the new normal, brought upon by the pandemic of course, because now we can clearly perceive how technology and emerging media has the ability to let people live their lives through the internet. Businesses, schools and universities, jobs down to the line of interaction and connections are now all online and the media industry is no different. That's how powerful it is. It's not just limited by sending texts and emojis, it's now developed as somewhat another version of the world, just online. Seeing how great the power of technology and media is at its current state, it also poses great threat with the havoc it may cause once this power is put in the wrong hands and is used for reasons solely catering to a particular group or even a particular person. Year 2001, when Filipinos made a mark in history. Imagine having a Nokia 3210 registering your load promo just to send a group message to friends and acquaintances about a random code. The very same SMS system used to take down one of the country's worst rulers. If the citizens of the Philippines were able to perform a revolution through the means available then, how much more now that with the technological advancements and the continuous emergence of media platforms? Broadcast media in its current form allows the masses, not only media practitioners, to create and disseminate information and other types of content. One may now provide credible and solid evidences to support shared information through photographs, videos, voice recordings that can rapidly spread among groups and groups of people in a matter of seconds. Deplorably so, this also provides a channel to manipulated content that can be used for misinformation and propagandistic purposes. In this point in time, we may say that media has become inescapable as majority of the population of the globe are deeply captivated by the usage of the internet, more particularly social media. And because of technological evolution, different forms of media adapted and almost all can be accessed online. Given its far-fetched range of audiences, media can easily be a tool towards total catastrophic outcomes or the key to holistic betterment, acting as the vanguard of truth. <laughs>